I want to start by saying it's been far too long since I just sat down and made a YouTube video like this, but there has been a lot of other good stuff going on. I'm doing regular free feedback live streams here on YouTube, and there's also a community beat making challenge on the go. So for anyone that's interested, I'll talk a lot more about that stuff at the end of the video, but I really want to get into what this video is all about. So in this video here, I briefly shared a productivity skill or technique that I've developed, but a few people wanted me to elaborate on it, and that's what this video is all about. But I want to start by saying, in general, productivity maximizing videos, especially ones on YouTube, kind of make me feel quite uncomfortable. There's something about them. To me, life is not about maximizing productivity or profit or trying to get, you know, squeeze as much out of every second of the workday as you can get. This is not about telling you to use a Pomodoro timer, some kind of journaling, putting a fake plant on your desk or something that's going to just, you know, maximize your productivity like that. It's just a simple technique that I've developed and I think it can help you whether applied to your work or some of your hobbies. I call it the five click rule and it involves two very simple steps. The first is automating just about anything in your software that takes more than five clicks. So any routine tasks. I use the Shortcuts app on Mac, it's built in, native, it's free, but there's great ones, there's actually even better and more powerful ones if you use Linux and Windows. So when I want to start a project, all I need to do is right click my folder, initiate the shortcut, maybe type in the name of the artist, the name of the song, and then it's going to build out the entire project and all of the folder structure and hierarchy. So it's going to open the project in the right sample rate. You could use a shortcut like this to pull open your own project uh, demo file, well not a demo, like a template file in whichever genre you were working in and it's going to have all of your information in there but also give you all the folders you need for rendering. So that's just one simple way that I would use the Shortcuts app but along with this it's an invitation to dig a tiny bit deeper in the software if you're finding yourself doing more than five clicks to do any kind of task like that. If you're a drummer and you want to arm say eight or twelve different tracks for recording and that takes you more than five clicks dig into this, there's definitely a better way. You should be able to select arm to record with a shortcut key and just get going with it. The second part of this technique is applying tactile improvements to your workflow. And I'm gonna dig into why the tactile part's important, but for me, this looks like using a Stream Deck, which I'll talk about more in a moment. But for many people, this is gonna be some sort of MIDI or software fader or even a touch screen or maybe a video editing keyboard. So something that's either specific to your software or like a stream deck that you can customize for any software or task on your computer. Before I go on about this stream deck that I use and how I've customized it, I want to assure you this is not a sponsored video. I bought the stream deck. Elgato doesn't know me. They don't know I'm talking about it. I'll leave a link to the one I use in the description. It's like an Amazon link. If you buy that, I will get an affiliate sort of commission, but they don't know me. That's just a normal Amazon affiliate. So everything I'm saying about this is my own opinion. I happen to like the device. Unfortunately, I use Mac OS, so it's not as powerful as it could be on Windows, where you can just unlock so much more functionality. It is just a control surface with some buttons, a touch screen, and some dials that you can pretty much map to almost anything on your computer or software. You can also just download people's profiles if you don't want to customize it yourself, but I've set up a few for mastering. So you could see here, I've got my horizontal and vertical zooms just dialed in on these, well, dials here. I use that when applying fades, so I can just apply fades with one button here. Fades are different in every single software I use, so just having a button that works for all of them is perfect. I can jump between my different markers. Importantly, I've also got some text set up, so just a random customization. When I'm exporting all the different file formats, instead of just typing them out each time, I can just hit the one relating to the file type. So you can see here, It'll just add that in, then I just have to type the number for the exact version that I'm on. I know that text there is probably incredibly boring to a lot of you, it's not very fun, but it's just what works for you and that's why I like it. It's customizable, doesn't lock you into a certain workflow. If this was only for music production and mixing, I probably wouldn't buy it, but you can use it to control uh, almost anything in your software. So when I'm live streaming, I'll use this to change between all my scenes. If I'm listening on Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, a different profile will load up and I can you know, change the volume, skip tracks, go to my favorite playlists, all this sort of stuff. If you're like me and you're working between different softwares for your work and hobbies, your shortcut keys are not going to map effectively across all of them. And at some point, it all just starts getting a bit jumbled up in your head, moving from one software to the next. These are shortcuts that should apply almost no matter what software you're using. Now, the reason specifically that I think tactile controllers work really well, my theory is that this goes all the way back to ancient human prehistory, you know, when we had to use our hands for everything related to survival, so hunting, gathering food, 
gathering materials, starting fires, everything revolved around using your hands. So there had to be some sort of positive feedback loop that says, if you're using your hands, you're doing the right thing. And that's why I think analog gear feels so good to use or a good tactile keyboard feels good. We're not, you know, uh, fighting for survival anymore necessarily, but it does feel good to turn these little dials when you're adjusting the software, at least for our generation. So that's quite a big tangent from the video, but I'm really fascinated by that sort of thing and maybe <clears throat> why we like doing the sorts of things we do, but that's not really related to productivity. We live in a day and age where all the mundane and boring stuff, you should just be able to automate it so that we're left to do all the creative and fun stuff. I don't want any computer to automate any part of my creative mixing, mastering, or just having fun playing instruments. I don't care for AI or machine learning to do any part of that. But if any of this machine learning or automation can take care of boring stuff, then you know, to be honest, I'm all for that. However, I did come across a, a programming joke a few years ago, a friend sent it to me, uh, which was something along the lines of why spend 15 minutes fixing a problem when you could spend six hours failing to automate a solution to the problem. So obviously don't go crazy with it. Sometimes there are tasks that just require you to put in a bit of effort, a bit of legwork, and that's also okay. I did say at the start of the video that I'd share what's going on in the community. So there's loads of fun stuff. We had a community beat making challenge that's just finishing up on Discord. If you missed that, there's a link to join the Discord so you don't miss the next one. I've been posting loads of short form content on Instagram and also YouTube shorts. I've been really enjoying that, trying to learn how to make helpful advice that's much, much quicker. And uh, most importantly, I've been doing regular free feedback live streams here on YouTube. So you won't get the notifications for these. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't send them out. So I'm telling you about them now, but you can sign up to get the notifications. And if you follow me on Instagram, you won't miss them. But these are where I accept loads and loads of song submissions, stuff you're working on, or maybe stuff you've just released. We accept submissions from the community. We get about uh, sort of 300 to 700 submissions each time. I literally just pull names out of a bucket uh, at random during the stream. We all listen, we follow those artists, we listen to their music, and I pull up loads of plugins and try to make things sound better on the stream. Um, and also usually each stream we I throw away like some free mastering or something like that. So it's a whole lot of fun. And I wanted to clear up a bit of a question. I, I really want to assure people they're completely free. They're not just for, it's not like a Patreon or a channel members thing. There's no pay to get feedback. It's completely free. It's completely level uh, playing field. I'm wondering how many more times I can say completely <laughs> in this video. But I just wanted to let you know what was going on because I've taken the gas off the regular YouTube videos so much because I've really been enjoying leaning into the community activities and also the short form. I've been really enjoying that. But I'm going to keep making YouTube videos, of course. I, I do like doing this. I just want to make sure that they're always of value to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please share any of your tips and tricks in the comment section. I read all the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.